Now, there's a lot of people that do not like surprises. They don't like shockers at all, but I'm not one of those people at all, especially when it comes to my Baltimore Ravens, whether positive surprises or negative surprises. Obviously, prefer the positive ones, but this one is one of those right here because when I saw this video, when I saw this clip, I said, oh, okay, EDC. Now, I don't agree with every single thing that Eric DaCosta does as the general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, but this attempt that he made... I like it. Let's listen to this from Cam Hayward's podcast. Mm. Who else was involved in the Justin Fields? Um, I don't, I'm not sure of all the teams, but you know there were a lot of teams that had already had you know solidified quarterbacks there, and I didn't want to um, do that. I think Chargers was one, Ravens was another. You heard it? Um, Ravens? Yeah. Or Raiders? Ravens. Uh, Ravens. Yeah. Raiders. Clear that up. Bit. I don't know too much uh, so the baltimore ravens they tried to get in the mix for justin fields and when you think about it when you look at what he's doing now and you think about the possibility of him being the backup quarterback to lamar jackson that could have been something that would have put a lot of ravens fans at ease when it came to the backup quarterback situation now of course we don't want the baltimore ravens to have to go to the backup quarterback and i honestly do not think they will have to go to the backup quarterback but the baltimore ravens they tried see with, with fans so many fans uh after the preseason especially uh, and I, that was obviously way after Justin Fields got traded. But so many fans were like, man, we need to upgrade the backup QB position. We need to get better there. But the Baltimore Ravens, they tried to get ahead of the game. Now, a lot of times when stories like these come out, it can be like, oh, man, Ravens tried, but they failed. They ain't get them. But in this case right here, can't be mad at the Ravens for trying. And you cannot be mad at the Baltimore Ravens for failing because there was no way – that they would have been able to be successful in landing Justin Fields. Reason being, he said it in that clip. Like, look, there, there were some teams with some established quarterbacks, some starting quarterbacks already on their squad. Why would he want to go there? Why would we, he want to go somewhere, especially as a first-round pick, why would he want to go somewhere where he did not have a legitimate chance to start? If he came to the Baltimore Ravens, he ain't start, you know he ain't starting over no Lamar Jackson. Of course not. So why would he go? They talked about the Chargers, too. If he went, he's starting over Justin Fields. So he needed to do the best move for him and his career so he could be uh, the quickest to have another opportunity in this league. Pittsburgh Steelers, they, they opened that up right up for him. And it has worked out in a great way for Justin Fields thus far. And in the AFC North, he's undefeated. Undefeated. In a, he's the only AFC North team that's undefeated. All of us are looking up at the Steelers right now. Like Ravens, 1 and 2. Browns, 1 and 2. Bengals, 0 oh and 3. Oh, we, oh, we like that. We love that. But anyway, um, so yeah, it, it worked out for them. But I do like that the Baltimore Ravens, they made the attempt. I was surprised by it, but I loved it. So much has continued to be said about what the Baltimore Ravens need to do in order to have that killer instinct in order to really finish off teams not just get up to a big lead and chill but get up to a big lead and really take the teams completely out the game and yesterday's presser Lamar Jackson he spoke on that and let's listen to something that he said having Dallas come back like that you know, for second week bro giving up all his points in fourth quarter um I, I believe when when another team's scoring and we really we just getting off the field and not helping our defense out that's the frustrating part. You know, it's like, man, we got to do something too. We can't mm -hmm. get another team. Look like they just steamrolling to make a comeback. Right. It wasn't happening in the past, and we wasn't trying to let that happen again. Mm -hmm. um, continue to put points on the board. You know, That's it. The ball. Um, I don't really try to look at it like just keep the clock rolling, you know, but if anything, try to make that happen too. We're trying to put points on the board. Now, with what Lamar Jackson said, he could have went a lot of different routes with that. But I appreciate that he put it all on the offense. And there have been other times when he's answered questions and he'd be like, oh, all guys on offense, all guys on defense. But this time he didn't even mention the defense. He ain't say, oh, it's on them to, to, to keep making stops. And you couldn't say that in a respectful way, but he didn't even mention them. He said, that's on us. And it's important that the Baltimore Ravens offense, they find that happy medium that Lamar Jackson was talking about because he said in order to stop teams from doing what a lot of teams have done to the Baltimore Ravens when they come back, he said, we got to put more points on the board. That's a given. But he also talked about they don't want to just run the clock out. So 
if they can find the happy medium that involves doing both of those at the same time, because they both go hand in hand. I mean, points is obviously that is the end all be all. That's the most important thing when you're scoring points, whether you're draining clock or not, whether it's a quick drive or not. If you're putting up points, that's what matters most. But if the Baltimore Ravens in these fourth quarter games, they can find a happy medium to where they're putting up points and draining the clock, too then that's a recipe for success every time. Yesterday we talked about how a portion of the Baltimore Ravens offensive line was not practicing, but today we got some good news and some little concerning news, but here we go. Uh, Jeff Zrebic said Tyler Linderbaum and Patrick McCarry and nose tackle Michael Pierce, they all back practicing for the Baltimore Ravens. They missed practice yesterday. We were like, oh, we ain't going to trip yet. But if they miss tomorrow and then they miss Friday, then it'll uh, yeah, be a little concerning. But our guy Linda Flinder, Pat McCarry and Michael Pierce are all back. But there's still some guys that are MIA. And that is the following. Not practicing. Left guard Andrew Voorhees got an ankle injury. And cornerback Jalen Alma Davis with a hamstring injury. Uh, and he said this is the second straight missed practice for both of those guys. So, um, yeah, that is uh, we, we're getting there. <laughs> like they got one more day left of practice. Uh, that they can come back for uh, If not then That's a wrap So right now it's not looking good for Voorhees or Jalen Armand Davis uh, But we'll see Now Jeff Ripick also said It'll be interesting what the Ravens do at left guard If Andrew Voorhees Can't go versus the Bills on Sunday Night Football Said they could move McCarry to left guard And start Rosengarden at right tackle Or they could also start Ben Cleveland At left guard Or they could start Josh Jones At left guard Guard. So the Baltimore Ravens, they have some options on what they can do uh, to fill in for Andrew Voorhees in the event that he can't suit up versus Buffalo. Team Keep It Clean, we have entered my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. Let's get straight into it. First question came from my guy Keontae, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. So I appreciate you, Keontae. Glad you got to go to that Dallas Cowboys Ravens game and go watch the Ravens win. He said, uh, the middle of the defense is our struggle right now. Bingo, it sure is. He said, uh, I think on nickel single back uh, packages, we need to take the reins off and put Simpson in instead of Roquan. Ooh, that would be very humbling. You want to take $20 million off the field. And, and, and put in, I don't even know how much he's making, but ain't no $20 million, but that would be something. Um, Trent Simpson has looked better when he's been in coverage than Roquan. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the issue is. I, I, I really don't. Uh, he said, I know that sounds crazy, but he is faster and tackles just as good. Rewatching the game, we were killed when the slants, uh, when the, with the slants routes got a hair pass Roquan, either throw in Simpson or give Sanusi Kane a shot and put Kyle at linebacker for those situations. Mm, this is where adjustments need to come into play. Um, this is it's on Zach Orr. It's on Zach Orr to figure this thing out. And like that, that would be a bold decision right there to take Roquan off in favor of Trent Simpson. Now, Roquan. He done seen it all, done it all. As far as an inside linebacker, he done seen every type of offense and whatnot. He done been in the middle of defenses against most quarterbacks in the league. He got a lot of experience over Trenton Simpson. So Ravens are not going to be like, all right, Roquan, you off Trenton Simpson, you on. Because this is really kind of like Trenton Simpson's rookie year. I mean, last year technically was, but this year he really getting a lot of action. But he's been doing his thing so far. He's he been doing his thing so far. I don't think anyone can say that Trenton Simpson has looked bad. Um, but now it's, it's a learning process. Would they be willing to do something like that, though? No. Nah. So Roquan just, he's going to have to tighten up. And Zach Orr is going to have to make the adjustments that put Roquan Smith in the best position to have success. Next question came from my guy, Steven. He said, what's going on, man? First things first, I hope you and your family are doing wonderful. Hey, we're doing great, man. Today has been a really, really nice day. Real quick, any of my fellow Florida Ravens, you know we got the hurricane coming our way. Y'all be smart. Be safe. Because... Y'all just be smart and be safe because y'all know how these things go. Sometimes you may overlook it. Be, oh, that's not what. Be smart and be safe. I'll just leave you with that. Anyway, he said, first time writing a question. Do you feel that someone like David Bakhtiari could potentially help our offensive line? I saw rumors online that he is predicted to sign with the Bears, but how much could he really cost and what type of upside can we get from him? Thank you for all the great content. Hey, I appreciate that, Steven. Um, David Bakhtiari, he's dealt with a lot of injuries, um, a whole lot of injuries. If they sign him like on a practice squad or something like that, I, I wouldn't mind that. Active roster, no. Um, but practice squad, 
Yeah, but um, you got a healthy Josh Jones. You got a healthy Ben Cleveland. Um, you got some healthy backups that you can get a, give an opportunity to that are in your system. And obviously, David Bakhtiari, he's been playing in the league for a long time, so he knows his stuff. And all, all the experience in the world. But it's just the, the only part is injuries, though. That's the only issue uh, with him. That's the only issue that has been with him. So if they want to, if, if the offensive line was still struggling and they were like, you know what, let's give him a shot and they signed to the practice squad, okay, cool. But I would rather give those other guys a shot before him. Next question came from Lewis Joey. He said, what's up, man? Great. I hope all is well with you and yours. Well, everything is good. He said, I've been thinking on styles of the offensive play uh, the team brought out each week so far. In the first game, it seems like they had the pass-heavy offense they used against the Chiefs in the championship game with flashes of King Henry and a very productive day for Isaiah Likely. In the second game, they had Zay Flowers' featured game, first half mainly, with some Mark Andrews sprinkled in and some more flashes of King Henry. Uh, in this last game, they went an all-out power run game that allowed Justice Hill and King Henry to flourish. It also uh, better integrated the RPO style that King Henry didn't seem to be as comfortable with leading up to the game. It has some big plays on the ground and receiving as a result. Call me crazy, but if they can package the three game plans they've used so far and use them all in one single game, I think the Ravens offense can finally be the force to be reckoned with. For example, I don't think defenses can keep up if they have to bring out uh, game one style to kick off the game, then throw them off balance with game three style right when they begin to adjust. Sorry for the long message, but I want to see if you also notice this offense evolution and get your thoughts on it. I'm hopeful that we might see some great likely Flowers and King Henry performances in a single game this season. That would be amazing to see. Thanks for the reading, Go Ravens. Hey, I appreciate that, man. And that that will be really nice. Um, and yeah, you're right. The, the, the three different games have produced three completely different uh game plans um but something that has been <laughs> something that has, that has been in all three game plans has been um trying to just mess it all up in the fourth quarter but Ravens need to get away from that but yeah with um the pass heavy offense in week one and, and Isaiah feature and Isaiah likely that see that can be hard though because you say you you would love to see a game where Isaiah likely go off Derek Henry go off say flowers go off that would be great but it's tough because the time of the game, I had just it's only one ball to go around. Um, it just depends on the flow of the game. It depends on what the opposing defense is. It just depends on so much. But it is nice that the Ravens do have the possibility of still continuing to evolve, to still continuing to grow. I thought that this offense was going to be coming out a lot stronger than they have been uh, this season, simply because they had so many returning faces. They had so many people coming back, but it hasn't been the case thus far. Um, so just taking them some time. Obviously, they ain't played nothing in the preseason, so maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, but anyway, it's week four. You're one and two. The world is watching. So what? Better opportunity than to put on an offensive master class against the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football. Next question came from Addison. And I appreciate y'all. We got a lot of new Team Keep It Clean people sending in questions. So I love y'all. Let's get into this. He said, hey, hope you're having a great day. I had a question that I hope I could maybe get an answer to in, in, in a video. How would you feel if the Ravens looked into a new offensive coordinator? Maybe looking into a future replacement for Justin Tucker and either Adam Bakken or Donald De La Haye. That ain't um that ain't destroying, is it? Ain't that destroying? I think that is. He said, Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day. No, you have a great rest of your day, Addison. Um I think it is time. I think the Ravens are um whether they want to or not. Uh obviously they don't they wouldn't want to. They will don't even want to think about having to replace Justin Tucker. But next year, next offseason or whatnot, gotta start bringing in some guys. Um just as additional kickers on the roster so it ain't got to be justin tucker getting all the kicks but bringing some guys um just for a little look see and whatnot um well justin tucker is signed i think somebody said he signed through like 2027 something like that so he he ain't going nowhere um but really they gotta figure this thing out since 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 justin tucker ain't going nowhere they, they gotta figure this thing out like if he gonna get right if he not gonna get right then he might have to get left man and that, as sad as it will be, man, it's a tough, tough business. It's a tough, tough business. So we'll see, man. Let, let's just hope that Justin Tucker, whatever going on with him, that he could turn it uh, around. But as far as a new offensive coordinator, um, mm, everything just depends. Same way with Justin Tucker. Everything just depends on how the rest of the season goes. 
Um, I know it can be like, look, hey, we want a new offensive coordinator. We want another offensive coordinator. But think about it. Like, with all the issues that the Ravens have had with offensive coordinators, there's been somebody else that's been at the head of those offensive coordinators every single time. Next question came from Corn Pop. He said, hope all is well with you and the family. My question is, what do you think about the Ravens going out and getting Bobby Slowick as their new coach next year? We didn't do the right thing and gave Mike McDonald the wink-wink deal and paid him head coach money with a guarantee that the head coach job would be his in the 2025-26 season. Oh, he's saying that's that. He's saying that's what we should have done. Should have gave him the wing. We did like, hey, you, you gonna be the head coach soon. You, you up next, but you just gotta wait one more year. That would have been nice. But Seattle, they paid him that bread, and I think he, I think he ended up being like the highest paid coach. Was he one of the highest paid coaches in the league? Um, but yeah, he he got his bread, and yeah, so that was that. And not only his bread, but even more importantly, well, just as important, he got his bread, but he got his opportunity now, and he got his opportunity to go do his thing away from the Ravens organization, away from John Harbaugh, away from EDC, away from Steve Bashotti, away from my, and not saying away like it's a bad thing, not not like not no no bad blood with those guys, but he's getting to do his own thing on his own with his own style, just in a completely different environment, really starting fresh. To where it's not like, oh, I'm following the footsteps of this person. No, he's starting completely fresh, and he's out there killing it. Oh, my fault. I wasn't even done with the question yet. He said, uh, slow it comes from the Shanahan coaching tree, and he is offensive-minded. You see what he's doing with them boys in Houston as the OC and the 49ers passing coach before that. I'm with you. I don't think Belichick would be a good fit for Lamar, probably uh, for the defense, but we need to start with the defensive-minded coaches and go in the other direction this time. Thanks, and I'm out like Lamar will be in four years if <laughs> – he said, I'm out like Lamar will be in four years if we don't get it together. My boy, Corn Pop, ain't playing with y'all. Keeping an eye out. Next question came from my guy, Ricky Williams. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well with you and yours. Just got finished watching this week's lounge episode with Ronnie Stanley. And let me just knock on wood and say, it's been a breath of fresh air to not hear Stanley's name on the injury report for once. Yeah, that's been nice. Like, even like, remember yesterday? Yesterday when most of the offensive line was hurt, Tyler Linda Flinder. Andrew Voorhees, Pat McCarry, all in practice. Guess whose name was not on that injury report? Guess who did not miss practice with an injury? Ronnie Stanley. Shout out to him. Anyway, continuing, he said, um, and it's good knowing that he's taking a major role becoming the leader of those guys. I know it's only been one week, but he talked about the improvements and the strides that the offensive line has made leading up to that game night against Dallas. Uh, in my opinion, I think the right side is still a huge question mark, but... What do you think the ceiling is for this current O-line situation going forward? And do you think it's time for us as fans to trust the process and fall back off Hobbs a little and see what unfolds? I mean, hey, look, we ain't got no choice but to because Ravens, like, they, they do be listening. They be listening to y'all for sure. Don't get it twisted. But at the beginning and end of the day, the Baltimore Ravens are going to make their own decisions. When it comes to the offensive line, we just got to hope for the best, man. Hope for the best. And, and, and I feel like as far as the ceiling for the offensive line, I, I feel like what we saw last week against the Dallas Cowboys is so, so important that the Baltimore Ravens continue that because it wasn't just the offensive line blocking good. It was the play calling. It was getting the ball out of Lamar Jackson's hands quick. It was getting the ball into the playmakers' hands quick. The receivers are tight. Well, tight ends didn't really catch so many passes. I mean, either there was, it was only what? Lamar had 12 completions or 15 completions, something like that. It was a very um, low volume type of, but they need to because the running game was working so well. So when the running game is working so well, that makes offensive line jobs easier. So, and, and they were blocking better for Derrick Henry, especially. Hey, like, he, he was going behind Fire Lele. He went behind Ben Cleveland. So, shout out to him. So, they were doing their thing. So, everybody just got to do their job to make each other's job that much easier. So, if the Baltimore Ravens can continue that, then the Baltimore Ravens offensive line, they can continue building chemistry. They can continue building confidence because that is so, so important. Because if you, as a player... Even not take it, take it away from football, just in life. If you're doing something and you don't believe in yourself, that can just kill any type of momentum that you have. That, that can make you finish with whatever it is before you even get started. So if they can keep on building up each other's confidence, then the sky really is the limit. And I ain't trying to just hype them up just because they bought tomorrow. We obviously want them to do great. We want them to do wonderful. But realistically, if they have confidence in themselves and you giving them plays that's building their confidence, building their chemistry and rapport and stuff to where they can really trust the guy next to them that much more, offensive line could be great, man. They really could. We know they're super young. We know they're super inexperienced. But they, 
as long as the offense the coordinator, Todd Munkin, helps him out, Lamar helps the Derrick Henry helps the receiver, everybody helps out each other, then they could take off, man. That question came from my guy, Nick. He said, ain't Raven, it's been years. Yeah, I remember that. What stuck out to me is your last name. And uh, that, that's a very unique last name. And I know I've seen it plenty of times before, but what's going on, Nick? He said, I hope you and your family are doing well. I enjoy your podcast and love the positive energy you bring to the community. I appreciate you, Nick. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Right now, daughter ain't feeling so positive right now. You hear here crying. I know you heard it in the last question. And she is going, but she's fine. Though. Anyway, he said, please give your thoughts on Marlon Humphrey. I, I love Marlon as much as everyone else, but I have noticed he is getting beat by receivers against the Raiders. He gave up completions to both star receivers as well as other receivers. I know he had an interception, but if we study the film, he just happened to be at the right place at the right time. The interception was more of a blunder by the Raiders quarterback than an achievement by Marlon Humphrey. What is the most bothersome is how much Marlon is costing us. He is the highest paid player on the Ravens roster this year, not named Lamar Jackson. Higher than Ronnie Stanley, Mark Andrews, Roquan Smith, and Matabike. Uh, if we look at film, uh, Brandon Stevens was tasked with defending Adams, and Stevens held his own for the most part. On one other point. Okay. Oh, no, let me continue. He said, one other point. The Baltimore Sun recently published an article on the Ravens' defensive leaders, naming the leaders as Roquan Smith, Matabike, and Kyle Hamilton. Marlon is getting paid like a star, but isn't, ex isn't expected to play like one. Uh, I feel that Marlon is a defensive liability and highly overpaid. He maintains a great public image and did a great job of getting a big contract from the Ravens. He is an ideal example of you don't get what you deserve. You only get what you negotiate. I hope the Ravens solve this problem that is going under the radar. Either restructure his contract or find other options. Or at a minimum, pay players such as Brandon Stevens who are outperforming him. Oof, my goodness. Nick is not a big fan of Marlon Humphrey. Wow. Um, I think with Marlon Humphrey, there have been some occasions where he got beat. Now, that um, the Raiders game, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's Devontae Adams. So, I mean, but overall, Marlon been having a pretty good season. He has overall. Um, and, again, remember that the Xavier Worthy touch? That wasn't him. That, that that wasn't on him at all. Um, but he, he's been having a, a pretty good season. Been coming up, making some nice tackles. He's missed some, too. I mean, a lot of Ravens missed some tackles, too, though. But, yeah, he's been doing his thing overall, in my uh, opinion. Um, with Marlon Humphrey, though, again, I, I think after this year, it's something big is going to happen with him, either a big restructure of, of him being released or, or traded, probably released. I, I just I think that the Ravens are going to move on from him sooner or later uh because you don't draft a cornerback in the first round uh if you don't got plans on that cornerback uh ending up being your starter eventually um i would love if they could keep him find a way but it's just we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll see what goes down with that but marlon humphrey yeah it, with, with cornerback it's a position to where um if things are going right then like you you could make a million good plays in a game but if you give up one, then a lot of people look at you like you're trash. A lot of people look at you like you're garbage. Oh, man, you gave up that. I can't believe you gave up that. Da, 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 da. But it's, it's the nature of the game. It's the nature of the business, man. So, so just keep watching him. Keep watching Marlon Humphrey. Uh, see how, how he does against them Bills, against Keon Coleman. That is the type of matchup that favors Marlon Humphrey. That he, unless it's a high point. If, 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 if he got a high point in the ball, that's not his specialty. But... Getting physical with them outside receivers, them taller receivers, with he can be physical. That's the matchup that goes in his favor. If it's them shorter, twitchier slot receivers, that mm, nope. Mm. But Keon Coleman, who else they got at um at wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills? Uh is it Cur not Curtis Samuel? Who? I cannot remember the. I can't, I can't remember his name. I ain't even gonna waste time trying to. But let's see how he does on Sunday Night Football. But overall, again, Marlon's been having a solid year. But I, I do really think that. This could possibly be his last year with the Ravens. If not this year, then definitely the follow-up. But he's on his last – he's toward the end of his career with the Ravens, in my opinion. Not because I don't want Marlon Humphrey to be a Baltimore Raven, but I just think the way that the business goes, the nature of the business – it seems like it's headed that way. Speaking of the future of some Ravens, next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, uh, what's good in Raven? Much love to you and the fam. Hope you're doing well. This is my first email I've sent and been supporting you for five years. Wow. Appreciate that, Dylan. I love you, man. Thank you. He said, I normally don't because Team Keep It Clean always thinking what I'm thinking when I watch the videos, but I have to just say something about Tucker after this Cowboys game. I know he only missed one field goal today, but that field goal led to the Cowboys sparking that comeback. If he would have made that field goal, it would have been 31-12. to Three-score game with 10 minutes left. Instead, it gave Cowboys great field position and a two-score game. I've been a Tucker believer through all these misses lately, but this one just felt to me like it could have costed us the game. A 46-yarder for Tucker used to be automatic, 
But now I don't feel comfortable anytime he comes out to kick unless it's point after touchdowns. Yeah, that's a sad reality. And what made that one worse again was it was in a dome. It wasn't no weather elements impacting it. He said, let me know what you think of Tucker's future going forward because I don't know what the Ravens should do. Once again, thank you for all the great content you put out. Blessings to you and the family. Thank you. No, thank you, Dylan. You ain't got to thank me. I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's scary to think about. It, it, it really is because it's Justin Tucker, man. We done seen this dude make every single sort of kick. The 66-yard field go like this. That's the man. That's him. But recently, it ain't been looking so good. So what do we do now? Where do we go from here? Well, since he signed with the Ravens for a while, um, this year, Ravens just got to figure it out. Like, what is going on? They got to figure out what's going on. Like, John Harbaugh, he need to that, – that special teams coach that he, he came from, uh, from the, uh, the Eagles as a special teams coach, that you, you got to pull it out of yourself and get like, hey, look, this is what the issue is. That's what the problem – and Harbaugh said the other day, oh, it's a technique issue. It's a technique issue. All right, y'all got to figure out that technique. Y'all got to fix that technique because that got to get fixed ASAP because that's – like, imagine if, all right, it's fourth quarter – it's three seconds left. Ravens driving down the field. They down by two. Ravens get the, they, they got the ball on what the 31 yard line. And that's a 49 yard field goal. You make this field goal, you win. Imagine if that's a regular season game. Imagine that's a playoff game. Imagine it's a Super Bowl. That's why they gotta get this issue fixed ASAP because it has the potential to be very costly to the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, you look at the Chiefs, you look at the Raiders, you look at the Cow, all misses. So he 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 got to get right, man. He really does. And sticking with Justin Tucker, next question came from my guy Jack. He said, I'm concerned about Justin Tucker's performance. It seems like he's struggling to make kicks beyond 45 yards, and even 40-yard field goals are becoming challenging for him. I believe we should stop attempting field goals from 40 yards and beyond and either go for it on fourth down or punt the ball. It might be best. Oh, before we get there. Um, that, and that that's a huge impact on Baltimore Ravens, just their team, their offense, just the way that they would play the game of football. If you don't believe in your kicker, then, yeah, you're going to be punting more or like you said, you're going to be going for it more on fourth downs. And depending on the situation, it, like that's that's rough, man. That's tough. That's a tough situation to be in. That's why we're hoping for the best for Justin Tucker, man. Hoping that this thing gets turned around and we can, like, a couple weeks down, we're we, we going to forget about this conversation. We were like, oh, remember Justin Tucker when we thought Justin Tucker was falling off? Ah, he, he fixed that quick. I hope that we can have that conversation. Uh, he also said, um, I think it might be best to trade him for a third-round pick and acquire a new kicker through free agency or a trade. Wow. 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 Now, you know what would be something that would be very frustrating? If, if the Baltimore Ravens traded Justin Tucker, then he went to a new team, and then he was, he was lights out. He was back to being his old self again. That would, be, that would be so frustrating, man. He said, additionally, we should consider drafting a kicker next year. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this strategy. Trade Tucker and sign a free agent or trade for a kicker and draft a kicker as well. Um, well, based on the money, <laughs> I think the third option, hope that Justin Tucker gets it right. And, and I think that's the, the, the option that the Baltimore Ravens are really going to be relying on. But, I mean, it has happened before J with Justin Tucker. He was an example of that because, remember, with Billy Condiff, Billy Condiff was fine at first. There were no issues with Billy Condiff. Ravens even signed him to a contract extension. Was, oh, yeah, Billy Condiff. Then there was a year where he just was missing and missing. And then the AFC Championship where he missed. Ooh, and they didn't cut him right away. Right after that, they brought in Justin Tucker. The following year, they brought him in as competition, but Justin Tucker ended up beating him out, and, well, we know the rest of the story. It's time for a change, unfortunately. Next question came from my guy, Thomas. He said, Angry Raven, it's been a while. Congrats on your new addition to the family. I appreciate that, Tom. He said, with that said, it's going to be a long one, so please hydrate. <laughs> he said, I hate to say this after a win, but something's got to give. I really think it's time to move on from Harbaugh. I can't really understand why we don't see or use Isaiah Likely, Ben Cleveland, not enough, and leave him in and start and say flowers only in certain situations. Why does our coach – all right, let's start with that. Well, I can't understand why we don't you see or use Isaiah Likely. In that game against the Cowboys, um, it was just run heavy, run heavy, run heavy, heavy on the run. Um, and Harbaugh did explain this earlier, and there's something that I, I know you all already know too. Not every game, because we, we want to see every player go off every game. 
Because we fan, we want to see, oh, yeah, we want to see him make play. We love that. But there's going to be some games where there's one player, one aspect of the Ravens game that's going off, and we want them to stick. If it's working, stick with it. Don't try to fix something that's not broken. So I get one and Isaiah likely to be involved in the game. I get that a lot. But if the running game is working, stick with it. Stick with it. And that's what they did uh, in, uh, in the game on Sunday against the Cowboys. So it wasn't featuring Isaiah Likely or Mark Andrews. Charlie Kohler got a catch that went for third, but that was it. Even the wide receivers. Now, you also mentioned um, Ben Cleveland. They, they didn't leave him in enough, and he needs to start. We talked about that, and he said, but Zay Flowers. Now, Zay Flowers, they, they use him a lot, a whole lot. They have him on the jet sweeps. They have him on the screen. They have him all the time. But even that, uh, Lamar only passed the ball, what, 12 or 15 times? I, I keep forgetting which one it was. But so it wasn't a big day for the receiver. It was a, hey, make the most of whatever passes get thrown your way type of day. Because, again, the running game was working. But anyway, he said, uh, why does our coach keep pulling Rosengarten out instead of keeping him in? Yeah. <laughs> he said, how many times do certain players need to keep proving themselves until we start them? With that being said, it's time to get rid of Harbaugh at the end of the season. But if we lose two games, I think we need to bring in an assistant head coach to replace John Harbaugh. Who do you think it should be? Sorry for the, uh, the two-part question. And like John Harbaugh is, if he doesn't get it together, I'm out. Oof. Um, they could do that if it was somebody that wasn't on a team right now. Um, but I, I feel like with Baltimore Ravens, if you're going to be replacing Harbaugh, it cannot you it, it cannot be something that's rushed. If they were to bring in somebody right now as an assistant head coach, in my opinion, it would just look like it would be rushed because that's a significant title to have. It really is. Um, if, if they were to move on from John Harbaugh, you got to take your time with it and make the right decision. Uh, you got to think about number one priority, in my opinion, would be Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, how can we bring in somebody, if, if Harbaugh was to be replaced, which he most likely won't be, but if Harbaugh was to be replaced, how can we bring in somebody who will get the most out of Lamar Jackson and take him to new heights? How will we do that? Um, so that will be one of the biggest things. And, and with, with, something, with a decision like that, based off of that alone, obviously a new head coach would have a million more responsibilities but based off of that alone it's not something that you can do in the middle of a season it's something that you really got to take your time with once the season is done coaching replacement and the game versus Dallas next question came from my guy Robert he said what's up engraving it's Rob love born and raised in B-more now living on the west coast oh that's cool man he said um been a Raven fan from day one my oldest son put me up on your channel like eight to ten years ago he is 31 so he was 21 at the time and uh and dad you will like this he said dad you will like this guy he's a good raven content uh, reviewer lol hey shout out to your son man I, I i appreciate him thank you tell him that we said thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you a million times so i, I appreciate it uh he said been rocking with you ever since but back to the subject bill belichick would not be a good coach for lamar look what he did with cam newton i forgot about that i think cam newton was on a different status than lamar jackson at that time but yeah uh, yeah he said he would not unleash Lamar to the next level. He would ruin Raven culture. He is too uptight. <laughs> That's a good point, though. Because, again, these Ravens, they, they like to have fun. man. Like, Lamar's elite. They like to have fun. They like to have a good time. They love it. Now, I did see something where, um, was it Cam Newton? I think it was, yeah, it was on Cam Newton podcast, fourth and one, where he's talking about with uh, Bill Belichick. One time, Bill Belichick told him, hey, show me that little dance you be doing. Show me your, 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 your touchdown celebration dance. When he said that, I was like, what? Bill Belichick said that? But anyway, continuing. He said, um, look what former players say about playing for him. He said Tom Brady was his success. And to prove my statement, did Bill Belichick win another Super Bowl without Tom Brady? No, but Tom Brady did win another Super Bowl without him with a lesser head coach in Tampa. And also, I'm beginning to believe that it's the Ravens versus the teams they play and the refs. Your thoughts. Oh, yeah, we, ooh, yeah. The way them, these calls be going, yeah, it's, it, it is so frustrating to see that, like, every single game. Um, every single game, it's been some crazy, every single one. But, yeah, back to Belichick, that's a good point. But, yeah, I, I, I'm, all, I, I'm not on board with the Ravens bringing Belichick in as the head coach. <laughs> no, nah, uh, nah, man. Like, if they – I feel like it would have been – a smoother transition if they brought him in as in some type of assistant coach and then he got to see the culture and he got to really uh sort of relax and ease up and whatnot and then okay this is how these ravens are okay i like okay that's cool and 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 see if he could be willing to 
adapt to the Baltimore Ravens culture. Um, but with Bill Belichick, he might, he might okie doke the Ravens, though. He might be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's fine. That's an assistant coach. But if he took over as head coach, he'd be like, all right, shut it all down. Next question came from my guy, Rave Kingdom. He said, hey, Raven, haven't sent an email to you in a while. Yeah, it has been a little minute. A little minute. He said, but I don't know if you noticed. If you look at all the Ravens content creators, I've been everywhere. So sorry about that. No, 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 no. Don't apologize for being supportive. Don't, don't apologize for being supportive to everybody out here that's that's doing this because we all appreciate that whether if you just watch if you leave a like if you comment you subscribe you spread the word you send it whatever you do to show support we all appreciate it and i, I appreciate it for them it is it's so many great people that's doing this for the baltimore ravens alone man we got a we got a lot like we spoiled man we spoiled like straight up, man. It's so many of them that do the, just a, a great job. So shout out to Don't Apologize for that. Anyway, he said, um, does Ben Cleveland eventually get a starting job on the offensive line? Ooh, that's a good question. I think if he ends up starting this sun, Sunday night, I don't think he will. I don't think Harbaugh's going to do that. But um, I think the only way he would get a starting job would be due to just it would have to be terrible, terrible, terrible play from Filele. Very consistent, but I, that's, I I don't think no. I don't think the only way that he would get a starting job right now is because of injury. Um, It seems like Har him and Harbaugh are slowly making progress, slowly on whatever it is that they got going on. But I just think it would take something like, I don't want to say catastrophic, but it would just take something significant uh, to happen for him to get a, an opportunity to be a starter. Harbs is and always will be the Baltimore Ravens problem. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, "Engraving, you already know how I feel about Harbs. He has always been a problem, even though we won a Super Bowl over 12 years ago. We barely escaped, and that logic hasn't changed. It's almost like he is coaching to lose on purpose. How is it that we have all these big leads and lose? He is the head coach, and he can't figure it out. It's not the coordinators. It's not the players. It's John Harbaugh, and he has always been a problem. He ran off Terrell Suggs, Air Reed, and May Ray Lewis want to retire because he was clashing with the veteran stars. We won a Super Bowl 12 years ago. That What has he done? since then what if Lamar never was a Raven to save Harbaugh's job uh John Harbaugh should have been fired any other coach would have been fired he is not Bill Belichick he has only one Super Bowl in almost 16 years as Ravens head coach Bill has how many as Patriots coach Harb should have been fired and for him to come out and say we have a beast at running back but he ain't getting the ball 30 times just goes to show you Harb is not committed to winning <laughs> now that part with that quote we can't take that quote because Derrick Henry just got 25 carries he just got 25 carries against the Cowboys. We knew Harbaugh was trolling with that comment. But anyway, continue. He said, he won't coach against Andy Reid. He balls up in the corner and cries when we play the Chiefs. It's getting ridiculous. Why is he still the head coach? Any other coach would have had Lamar Jackson and the Ravens with multiple Super Bowls by now. Harbaugh's excuses after excuses. Playoff loss after playoff loss. Lamar will be 1,000 years old before Harbaugh wins him a Super Bowl. Fire Harbaugh. And if you ask me, fire EDC as well. His draft picks and signings have been moderate at best. A few good players here. A few good draft picks there. But in all, all in all, he has been mediocre as a GM. Why not accommodate? your QB and listen to him for once and go get him a guy at wide receiver he asked for DeAndre Hopkins nothing he asked for Devontae nothing he asked for DK Metcalf nothing nothing EDC picks up nothing EDC picks up watched Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Dra drop a lord and re-signs Rashad sometimes I'm good Bateman shaking my head bless the family the channel and our Ravens sorry for the paragraph I'm just sick of not winning rings and Lamar Jackson our Ravens falling short year after year Wasting Lamar away with nothing to show for it. Fire Harbaugh and EDC, they need to go, especially if we waste another year without a Super Bowl victory. Whew. My guy TJ, he, um, he was fed up with what the Baltimore Ravens are doing, well, in this case, are not doing when it comes to winning Super Bowls. And I love, I love the, um, the standards that my guy TJ has because he's all about not just winning in the regular season, not just winning, but winning Super Bowls. And, and the Ravens have had some teams. Quite a couple of teams that should have definitely got the job done, but they fought for different. And we get it; it's tough to win a Super Bowl. is tough. It's only one Super Bowl every year. It's thirty-two teams going for it. Realistically, it's probably like sixteen teams that really got a shot. Maybe even less than that. But Baltimore Ravens have been though in within those teams a good amount of times. Uh, you look at twenty nineteen and twenty twenty three as the biggest years, the biggest opportunities, the best opportunities, the best rosters, the best teams. And they just, it's like when the, when the moment was at the, the biggest, the Ravens went away from themselves. They were not true to themselves. They didn't even give themselves a good, legitimate shot at winning. And it's like they ended the game before it even started. So, um, 
Yeah, we'll see how this year goes. We'll see how the season goes. Um, I just I don't see EDC or Harbaugh going anywhere. Uh, I don't see either one of them two. They're not gonna get fired. They're not gonna. I, I just I just don't see it happening. It, was, it ain't happening. It's not happening. So um, I know there's some Ravens fans that like that. There's some Ravens fans that don't. But again, we all want the same thing at the beginning and end of the day. We all want the Baltimore Ravens to be a successful franchise. We want them to win. We want them to get the best out of Lamar Jackson, just the best out of the whole team. We want them to be Super Bowl champions. We've seen that the capabilities that this teams, these teams have had. We just want them to get back there again. Uh, yeah, it has been over 12 years since the, well, it has been 12 years since the Ravens won uh, their last Super Bowl. It's been 12 seasons. So they wanted the the 2000 season they wanted the 2012 season it's the 2024 season it's 12 years later they got that 12 year gap so might as well fill it with a trophy